All right, good morning and welcome to day three of our beginner training. Um, we have a couple things to hit today. We're gonna start out with reports and I'm gonna talk about those. And then um, we're gonna switch over. Pat's gonna hop on and um, she's gonna talk about the utilities menu. And then we have just a couple miscellaneous things to, um, to end it out with. And let's see, so, get out of here. Um, so, of course, I'm going to go ahead and um, start in the wiki. We'll um, hop over. I do want to show you something with reports, but um, just in case anybody, um, if anybody wasn't here for the, the previous days or if you are catching the recording starting on this one, um, I do just want to <laughs> hop over to our new uh, beginner training page. So I'm down here at SSD team meetings and trainings. And um, this ITC training registration was the page that you would have went to or you would have gone to um, to either register or get to the recording. But down here under training materials, we do also have a page for um, all of the beginner training materials and recordings. Um, so the agenda is here. The PowerPoint that we are um, talking about that I had up at the beginning, it has slides for everything that we talk about can be found right here. And then um, here are the daily recordings, but we will be breaking down each recording. And like even, I mean, we're on day three, we've talked about a lot. If there's something back on day one that you think about later and you're like, man, I really, you know, I wanna refer to something in that section. All of these in this column, all of these um, topics are going to be links directly to that like timestamp in the recording. So um, we'll have to do some organization to get those posted, but we plan to do that soon. Um, so keep an eye out. And then if this is something that you are going back um, to review something from beginner training, we hope that makes it a whole lot easier for you. So that's the new beginner training page. Um, and let's see, so I'm just gonna go right back to my homepage. Uh, we're gonna roll right over to the report section in the USAS documentation. And um, I'm over here, I have my little reports menu here. And I'm gonna expand a couple of things. So my report menu, and we'll see once we hop in the software, this corresponds to the report uh, menu in there. We have the report bundles, report manager, custom report creator, and then canned reports are what actually shows on the report menu. I also, if I expand report manager, I have a whole list of these template reports. So um, I'm just gonna, I wanna click on this and show this before we hop into the software. Um, if, you know, if you are, um, if you were familiar with Classic, if your districts were familiar with Classic and there are certain reports that maybe they don't run all the time. I mean, you know, when they first switch, this is really handy for sure. But even down the line, like maybe there's something that they're like, hey, I, I used to run, you know, this report or this program. Um, this is a, a crosswalk. Uh, right on this template page that shows what it was called in classic and um, what it's called in, in redesign. So um, that's really helpful if you do get questions like that. Uh, the other trick is, let me just go back. So this is just my basic USASR documentation page. I have this search right here. And if there's something that maybe I'm not seeing, um, I could type that in here and search, and then um, this is really helpful in locating if there is a redesign um, version of this. So I can see um, the certification and appropriation reports. My AMD cert program um, from Classic pops up there. So if I go ahead and click this, then this tells me um, the report that, that I could run. And this one is kind of a good example of this because it's not just on that template report. This one is a special one that's on the periodic menu that we talked about yesterday. Um, okay, so with that, uh, let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. Actually, I'm just gonna go Right back to my USAS documentation. We'll probably be back here. So I'm gonna head to, uh, I'm gonna keep this, keep this handy. Um, let's sign in though. All right. So the very first thing that I'm gonna talk about before we even start diving into pages 
is the different kinds of reports that exist in redesign. And when I um, come to this homepage in USAS, um, I have an option to see um, the, this list of reports on my homepage. Now, the types of reports, the category that we're going to talk about that these fall into is template reports. It's how we would generally refer to them. Um, sometimes, like, you know, if we're talking about reports on a ticket, we might say, you know, a template report. So any of these that fall on the home page, they also we're going to see them in the report manager. So these are the same list of reports in the report manager and the home page. Um, and then there's a way within the report manager that you can favorite them. And, and that's why sometimes this, this list looks shorter um, if, if a user, like my user, has, has these favorited. Um, the other kind of report that we'll just go ahead and touch on is these periodic reports. So I talked about those yesterday, appropriation resolution report. Um, there was, you know, a printable version of the cash reconciliation, certification reports. So those are kind of its own category um, as far as I have, you know, in as far as how I like to think about it, I guess. Um, but those ones we aren't going to talk about today since we um, talked about yesterday. But that would be kind of a separate group um, that I would note. And the last group, um, and this we are definitely going to talk about today as well, is canned reports. So all of these on this menu are considered canned reports. So let's take a minute to talk about just kind of like the basic difference between these two types and like why, why, why are we talking about having, you know, reports in different places here. Um, the big, big difference. So what we're going to see when we look at the template reports, those are reports that um, SSDT has built, but they can be customized. Any of those template reports, you can open them up, you can add fields, you can remove fields, um, you have a lot of flexibility with those reports. But as such, they are um, a little bit limited in, in some of the things that they can do and pull. So they work, um, you know, they, they pull specific fields throughout the software. Um, they actually give you like a lot of access to pull different things. Um, but what, what um, can happen and what is the purpose of some of these reports that are canned is like sometimes you might want like a different calculation on certain um, fields or um, and these are kind of comparative to like classic reports. So sometimes there were additional calculations or like the revenues and expenditures report. It's not just a straightforward, like add everything together. It's like add the received amounts and um, subtract the expended amounts. And so something like that is a bit more complex uh, calculation that you can't necessarily just like customize custom customize further, I guess. So uh, because of that complexity, what SSDT has done is written these as the canned reports. So you can't necessarily customize these. You have parameters you can enter in. So you, you can select certain things. Um, it does give you the option to do that, but you can't open up the report and completely um, customize it the same way as templates. So they each have their benefits. Um, the other thing that we're gonna um, see as well is that this list has definitely grown for the CAN reports within um, the last year. And um, some of these reports, budget summary, disbursement detail report, these are ones that started uh, with the template version. That's what we used to use. And the team has actually rewritten those template reports as canned reports. Um, the, the reason for that is not necessarily because there's different calculations or fields, but it's because um, they can actually run faster and they can um, provide better performance if they are um, on this canned, uh, if it's a canned version. And so there's some more um, things they're able to do in the background to make that report run better. So we've transitioned uh, or we're working on transitioning um, several of these reports over to this menu so that um, you do have the option to, to run them quicker. 
um, especially for districts with large uh, charts of accounts, you know, that can be really, really um, needed and beneficial. So, um, okay, so let's see. Yeah, you know what, let's go ahead and dive right into some of these um, canned reports. So I wanna just show the account status report is one of the canned reports we've had um, around before. And let me go to just like a default. So this one, um, you can see these do still have like fairly complex parameters that you can use. Um, I mean, we looked at some, like we looked at the reports, we looked at the extracts yesterday and the extracts have like, you know, those are very, very straightforward. But these reports, you know, they, we do have, you can select by certain, um, you know, account codes. Uh, we have a date range. And then we even have this sort properties um, back over here. And this gives you quite a bit of flexibility as far as how you want the headers and the subtotals and the sort order to appear on a report. Um, when we look at the template reports, this is actually also an option that uh, that you have on uh, when generating a template report. So I promise you we'll go more we'll go into more detail about how this little this box over um, on the right side works. And that will apply both when you see it on canned reports and when you see it on template reports. So so we'll come back to this. Um, but we have so we have save and recall we have start and stop dates uh the report format um and then down here we have parameters so um if i enter all i would need to do to, to filter this down so if i wanted to limit this report to only give me results for a certain fund i could do that and i would be able to just enter um, any parameters i wanted to limit it by here um, I also have this option to apply a filter. So Pat is going to be talking about the filters in the utilities section. So take note, this is where um, those can be used once they're created. And um, once the filter is created there, it will show up in this drop down. And um, all of these reports have the filter um, option. So as we um, you know, do take a look at those canned reports, make note of that. And I'm sorry, I'm kind of hopping around in the in the different options here, but um, but so now we've got so this is just selecting the content down here as far as account code. But let's hop back up to the top report format. So PDF is going to be your standard um, output as a PDF file. That's it's going to have a nice little format header, um, everything there. And then we have some other options. So comma separated values is just is a, is a data format. So that is just gonna be just the basic data and it's gonna be comma separated. Excel, so this Excel version that's just called Excel is also gonna come over with formatting. So this one is, it looks the same as a PDF, but it puts it in an Excel sheet. It's not like a standard spreadsheet data though. Um, if you're looking for, to take a report to a, like a spreadsheet, you want, you just have to scroll down here. Oops, you know what? I'm thinking of the template reports. So, so this one is gonna take it to, um, I don't, yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's some of these we still need to add. Yeah, okay, so this one just has standard Excel. I'll show you um, <laughs> how to find Excel data when we get to the template reports and getting ahead. Um, okay, so, so this one's just gonna be like a formatted um, version. The HTML table and HTML field names, this can be used, um, The it's not used very often. It's basically taking the information to like a web page format and that sounds very weird. Uh, this is probably a little bit more than beginner, so I'm not gonna get too far into this today, but these formats are used with this report link. And what that report link would allow you to do is basically um, get a URL that like basically links to or runs the report and these two formats can actually be used um, with Excel to get data from web. And it works kind of similar to how Safari used to work where you could pull data in 
and then you'd have the option to refresh um, instead of having to like completely pull a new um, a new report. So uh, we have an example using the the financial detail in the appendix section of our uh, wiki. So if that is something that sounds like uh, something you need in a certain situation, keep in mind that's something you know that is available for reports. But yeah, these two formats, really, that's all that I've ever used them for is um, when I'm using that report link. Um, plain text, that's just like a TXT file. And then um, Jasper, uh, this is like a specialty program. I'm going to be honest with you, I have not used this one. So um, I'm sure that there is like maybe a specific situation you might need to use that. Um, so it's available, but not very often. Mostly PDF is what I'm running these um, as. The start and stop dates. So this is gonna be the date range that you wanna run the report for. And then um, I'm, I'm kind of working backwards here, but I do still wanna talk about the save and recall. Uh, this is an option that we are going to see uh, throughout all of so it's on the canned reports and it's on the template reports and basically what this does so and I know we talk about classic a lot but if you are familiar with that it kind of helps to like put a little bit of context here or even if like your districts end up asking about something like this um, after they've migrated um, so there used to be an option that like I'm not sure how many districts really use but it was there where there was like a parameter feature on reports they could save um, and then have like different um, kind of like saved versions of what they would type in into these um, report parameters. So this kind of mimics that. It allows them, so we typed in this fund here, and then maybe we want this, maybe we want this like as the formatted Excel report. And, you know, maybe we also were wanting this for like a certain object. Um, but maybe we use this like once a month and we don't want to have to come remember the exact same thing that we type in for this one every time. So what I can do is I just I did this drop down, I select the blank. So I'm going to I'm just giving this whatever name I want to give it that I'm going to remember what I use it for. So monthly and then this is my cafeteria fund. So I decided that's what I'm going to name this parameters. And then I just hit tab on my keyboard and I have the option to save this. So now I have this in my drop down monthly cafe. And so if I want to go, the default is like what the system would first start as if you've never used this report. So that, that clears everything out. That's the default. But if I was like, okay, so I come in here, I might have run this report a bunch of different ways since, but I know, oh yeah, I want that monthly cafe one. And boom, look, it's in Excel. So I don't have to remember every time that I needed to change that. It's got exactly what I want in here. Um, and then I could just run it for the dates for this month. So, and I can still, like if something changes and I'm like, oh, you know what, this month I want this one. Oops. <laughs> um, I can still change it and then run it. I mean, it's not gonna save this unless I save again. I could just save over it, uh, but that is really handy. Available on a ton of reports, like the account status report, maybe this isn't one that they, they'd use that for, um, but they can have as many of these as they want. Um, it is a per user thing. So like if I'm logged in as the admin, as me, then I can see this. But if I go log into my Amanda account, you know, if a user logs in that's not ad admin, um, they don't see this. So it is kind of like just a personal thing. I want to make this, I run these um just a handy way for me to to help myself instead of having to remember and type these in um so yeah so they could have so here we'll just do another one real quick we'll do a general fund oops not object what am i doing um and then let's say this one we'll make this one a pdf and again, just a blank. And then I'm gonna hit tab on my keyboard and save that up. 
And then boom, I have that on my list. So those can be very, very helpful. Um, I'm sure that there's way more um, complex uh, combinations that they may have, especially once we get into the template reports. But just as we go, uh, keep that in mind. Um, okay, so let's see. Ah, uh, okay, I do have my notes. So this one shows the CSV. This might not be available yet. I'll, I'll have to check on that. Um, I'm, it might just be certain canned reports, but I do have a note for the canned reports with, with the Excel data and the CSV. And again, those are like straight like spreadsheet data. Um, so because that's just like, uh, because the, honestly, like one of the things with the canned reports is a lot of them are customized and like brought to the canned reports because of formatting reasons. So that sort of makes it hard to um, have like a data dump version of it. But um, a lot of these, again, do have the counteracting uh, template report and you could get um, uh, an Excel from there still. So, OK, so let's look at I'm going to go over to the budget summary. So this is the new budget summary. Again, we have our save and recall. That's perfect. Um, report format. Here's all of your um, filters for accounts. This one does also have the total as of period. And so the total as of period is something that is on the template report. So we'll see it there as well. Um, so this report, let me let me generate this one real quick. Um, yeah, well, I guess we'll we'll generate we'll, we'll talk about the the rest of these before we generate them. I'm jumping ahead. Um, so the total as of period is uh, any reports that like this one, so this is a budget summary, it's going to pull expenditure account data. And um, on the first day, we looked at this core account screen and we saw all of those account grids. And, you know, if we open it up, we look at the account, we can see the fiscal to date figures, we can see the month to date figures. And the figures that we're seeing there, our system is in March 2022. So all of those year to date totals that we're seeing would be as of March 2022, because that's our current period. Now, if I run this report and I leave this blank, it's going to give me the figures as of March 2022, because that makes sense. Um, and so I will get, you know, I'll get fiscal to date totals here um, that are up to now. But um, there are cases where you might want to get this budget summary report and run it as of a previous period. So if I wanted to see, um, you know, what if I wanted to run this this budget summary as of February, say I was still trying to balance that out um, or there was something that I needed to see. I could use this drop down and say, OK, I want to see the totals actually what they were in February 2022. And that'll be like as of the end of the month, as of like, yeah, the end of the month. So everything that's happened um, through that month um, when you select that. Show options. This is going to uh, give us like uh, an options page. It'll give us a summary showing what we selected here, like here within these parameters. So that's um, usually helpful to have. Um, the summary report. So a summary report, and actually I'm going to uncheck this for now, but we can look at uh, we can look at a version of that. So the summary report is um, over here. And again, we'll talk more about these sort options in a bit because I think they're easier to show um, with the template reports. But um, these control breaks uh, designate what the headers are on a report. So it'll have um, basically like a header. So right now this one's going to have a header of the cash account. So each cash account is going to have its own section on my report, and it's going to subtotal by that number as well, or um, by that um, like field as well. So um, if I do the summary report, what it's going to do is it's only going to show me the headers and the subtotals. And so it's a limited version. It's a summary um, of the report that just doesn't include all of the detail that you would see on a normal budget summary. 
and this is available for, for a lot of the reports as well. Um, include only active accounts. So that's your filter is gonna filter out inactive uh, accounts that are marked inactive on the expenditure accounts page. And then exclude accounts with zero amounts. So if everything is zero, if all of the columns would be zero, um, then it's going to exclude those from my report. So, okay, let's go ahead and generate this so we can take a look at what this looks like. And let me do an open one done and see it. That was pretty quick. Actually, I probably, you know, I ran this for um, just my 006 fund because I'm kind of used to doing that, but we probably could run it for really whatever we want. Um, okay, and so here's what, what this is looking like. So see, I have my cash account code. This is my control break. Um, so that's that's my header there. And then I have um, my accounts and then here are all of my figures. So I have my fiscal to date appropriated, expendable. And again, I can see up top here, I chose February, 2022. So my reporting period is as of February. And there's a lot of information on here, but here's your, um, here's the end now is, uh, here's the subtotals and this is by this cash account. And while we're at it, uh, let, let's just run the summary report real quick so you can see the difference here. Boom and boom. So see my header, just my header and um, just my subtotals, oh, subtotal and, and grand total in this case. Okay, and um, let's see. So the other canned report, and um, gosh, it's so funny because we've really, a lot of these, since our last, you know, bigger inner training last year, when I was looking through these, I was like, wow, you know, we have really, we have a lot more to show when it comes to this menu this year. So this is kind of exciting. Um, okay, audit report is the other one. And okay, gosh, so this one also started out as a template report and we absolutely wanted to enhance this one for some time. Um, and the, the template report, I didn't use it very often to be honest, because it was a little bit difficult, um, but it was kind of limited as well on like what you were able to select by. So one thing that our development team, like really, I think just did an excellent job on with this one, is they gave us so many more selection options. And this can be um, really helpful when you're looking for, um, you're trying to find like some activity associated with the transaction. So let me go, my save and recall, I just put this back to default. So this is what the selection, cause I was probably in here running it before. <laughs> um, so the default gets me back to, this is what you're gonna see when you first go into this, if no one's touched it. Um, I have the dates, so let's do, gosh, let's do three, seven, uh, let's do the 16 because Pat and I have both been in here doing things for the last couple days. Um, select operations. So um, these three, so create is like adding a new record. Update is changing a record that's already in the system, but like you edit, so like an edit. Um, operation and then delete is if you actually removed something. So I um, mean, you can see with these little tool tips that um, on the report, like it's add, mod, and um, del is like their abbreviations. But for the selection process, they wanted to make that a bit more clear um, to users. You know, which what each operation was instead of just having it be like mod. Um, and then select uh, select specific objects. So this is where you can kind of say like, what kind of activity am I wanting on the audit report? Like you can actually select certain things. So if I'm thinking, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of something I did over the last couple of days, but um, Let's go, let's go to disbursement because I think that both Pat and I did things there over the last couple of days. So I wanna see what was going on on the disbursement page, what kind of activity was there. Um, I can also select specific users if I wanted, which is great if you need that, if there's some, you know, a specific user that you were like, okay, 
When did this happen? You don't have to though. Um, so here's, here's how these work. I probably should say, um, so you have this list over here. If I want a specific thing, I can select it and then move it over. But um, if I just leave everything here, then nothing specific is selected. It should run for all. Okay, and then, so let's go ahead and generate this and see what we get. And see, that one was super quick too, which, you know, that, that's just great considering um, how much activity these can be sometimes. Um, this one's not too bad. This one's um, eight pages, but um, yeah, I know they really worked hard to make sure that this was this one was quick. So, okay. So what we have here is we have the timestamp. This is when a thing happened. This is the username. So I didn't select a specific username. Like all of these are gonna be admin because that's the only one we really use in this instance. But if I had, if like, say you don't know which user made the change, that's what you're trying to figure out. Like if I didn't enter it, boom, I could see right away, you know, the user that's associated with each change on here. The operation. So um, number add was creating a record. So admin created a disbursement. Perfect. Target key. So here is the disbursement um, is the number associated with that disbursement. And then we have some additional information here. Like we have the amount, we have the created date, user, um, and there's um, a bunch of different information here. Here's like a modification that happened. Um, and let's see. type yeah so this one so i don't know i don't know that we can see disbursements maybe weren't the, the best one so disbursements i know we'd have activity for but um these you know we kind of just posted disbursements and let them be um but as you go through these different types oh oh let's show this one um posting periods so i love that they added this this is like really helpful um because you know certain types of transact i mean well transactions in general that we've talked about um you know you can only like add or modify them like if the associated period is open and so sometimes just even the timing of what happened with the posting periods can be uh really helpful and there is a timestamp on that timestamp grid but it shows like the last time it happened so if like you know, there's a situation where things were like open and then closed and then open and then closed. Like you just have the last record, the last timestamp on there, um, but you don't necessarily have the full picture. You can go look at the posting periods on the audit report and look, I can see, all right, so December, 2021. And so this happened on February 3rd, December. So the field name is open. So it went from false to true. So I can tell you that on February 3rd, December 2021 was closed, but went to open. Um, and then I just get, so I just get all of this detail here. It looks like we were flipping these around quite a bit in the last month or so, <laughs> but um, it's just really helpful. Um, for that. So I'm super glad that they included that option. I'm sure I could probably go through a bunch of these and um, just, you know, show how <laughs> how much you can see for each, but it, it's come in handy, um, you know, especially for us at SSDT trying to help you and, um, you know, looking at the district's backup, like this is just a great way to kind of get a picture of, of what's going on. And I hope that this is really helpful for you at the ITC as well. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, I'm going to go to the report manager. And okay, so first of all, let me just quickly show um, we talked about on the homepage, there were um, certain reports if they were favorited. And um, so if you're on this grid, if you use this favorite column and you check mark these, 
that's going to designate what shows on that homepage when it's filtered to just show the favorites. So if um, if you have, you know, someone in a district that has all these reports in here, but there's like five that they normally run and they want those on their homepage, they can just come right in here, check them. It keeps them checked. They only have to do that once. Um, they can always add more or take them off. Uh, so that's just a really nice little uh, visual um, thing that they can do. Um, as far as these icons go, so this little um, down arrow is to generate and download the report. So that's just to, to yeah, generate it like we were um, generating the canned report. So we'll, we'll go back to this. The eye icon is for viewing. Now, it's interesting to me because I feel like, you know, in most pages when we're looking at like transactions and stuff like we when we view a transaction, like it pops up, it gives us the detail, um, but this one works a little bit different. So for the reports, we're viewing the report definition and um, we actually can edit it in this mode. So this is this eye icon on this grid is unique in that this is how I customize a report. The edit, so when I click this one, and this one I'm just going to go ahead and click now because there's not too much to it. So this one I can indeed edit. Um, what I would be editing is like the report name, the description, or the tags. Now this is a custom report, so I can cha actually change the report name. I can't do that on the SSDT reports because those are standard. Um, but for all of these, I can add tags. I'm not sure how often tags are being used, to be honest with you, but it might just be that I don't see them um, too much. But you can see we have some examples of tags here. And basically what this is, completely custom to what the district wants to use it for, um, it just basically gives a way to designate um, a, a word, um, some indication, so that if they want to be able to, to filter their grid to easily see a certain grouping. So. If I type in form, any of these that are marked as a form will show up. Um, if I wanted to, and that's why I can tag the SSDT ones too, because if I wanted to have, you know, say I wanted to tag all of the reports that I would want to run monthly and look at, then I could add a tag um, here and then um, do that. I could also do like if I wanted to do multiple words and then search with wildcards, I could do that as well. Um, okay. That's so funny. I'm so sorry. I <laughs> saw something in my background and I was like, wow, what is this? What is this background picking up? So I just thought you should all know it's sunlight. <laughs> I'm getting, um, <laughs> getting thrown off by just a reflection here um okay so quick brief pause for that <laughs> all right where am i at um okay so uh so next we have the delete icon okay so uh this one you can see you can only do this for your custom reports you can't do you can't delete any of the SSDT reports but if it's a report that you created and you want to delete the definition you um, just click here and can remove it this next icon is um for downloading the report definition so if i click this it's going to um save this as um what we refer to as a json file and um so that will um basically it saves it as to your computer as like um a definition so that you could if you sent it um to somebody else they could import it use this import and import it into their own instance. So that's just a way, basically, it gives you a way to share custom reports. And then this last one is um, share report definition with roles. So we talked about roles yesterday and how you could kind of have custom roles or there were standard roles. Um, whichever of those, if I have a report that I created, so this one is created by admin, I added this in here. 
by default, only I can see the reports that I created. So like every report that every person in the district creates isn't just going to automatically show for everyone. Um, administrators will see them all. But, um, but for a standard user, if they're creating a custom report, um, other standard users aren't just going to be seeing it as well. So, but if they do want to so say like, the treasurer creates a report and they're like, hey, I want um, all of my, um, you know, a certain group, like I want all of my secretary group to be able to see this. So they can click on this and this gives them any roles in the system. And if there's a role that that group has in common, then they can just um, go ahead and say, yes, I want to give this to all of my rec plus PO view users. And then anybody that has this role um, will be able to now access this report in their report manager or from their homepage if they don't, you know, if they have it showing all. Um, okay. Great. So let's go then to, um, I'm going to go to like, let's look at a cash summary as, um, oh, actually, you know what? Let's start with a budget summary. Um, so let's look at this generate option in this page. So there's there's a couple different tabs here. So I kind of want to talk through the different things that um, that you can do with these with these options here. Now this is the page that you get. I'm I'm generating the report. I'm I'm just opening it up to run it. And um, first and foremost, you'll notice you do have that save and recall. So this works just how we saw on the canned report. Um, I could, you know, make a blank and anything that I enter in here in any one of these tabs, and we're going to go through them all, but anything that I enter in any one of these tabs will save in my save and recall. So um, now you see there's a bit more going on on these template reports. So this can be very, very handy. Um, okay. So uh, my first tab here is just the standard report options. Um, I have the format, and then this is where I wanted to show you. So I have my PDF, I have my CSV. Um, again, this Excel is like a formatted, it looks like the formatted version. If you want a spreadsheet, you go here, you scroll down, and you wanna click uh, select this Excel data. And that will give you the spreadsheet version of um, just the data. And something to note, these spreadsheet versions, comma separated and Excel data, they um, it's because it's like a data version, it's not gonna include headers or subtotals. It doesn't include the control break information that is specific to a format like a PDF. So um, just keep that in mind um, that the summary report version, as we saw, is only headers and footers, uh, header, yeah, and uh, subtotals. So if you run it as like a spreadsheet version, it's not gonna, it's not like a summary report version doesn't read as that. Um, so that, that doesn't apply to those, just those specific ones that are data output. Um, page size so this is like you know just the a standard kind of like print size option orientation do you want it to be landscape or portrait and then this one so this is the name this will just default to like a standard but if we wanted to If we wanted to customize this, where this is going to show is at the very top of our report. This is going to be our like title, um, like here. It's going to um, show on this report. So we can customize that um, with this field, with this name field. The query options, and you know what? I have this like really zoomed in for the training. So let me try and. Uh, no, I'm going to lose. Okay, well, so this one, we, we can um, still see what we need to see here, but include the fund code. So this is if I wanted to um, pick a specific fund. Um, I'm sorry, a specific full account code. So I'm running a budget summary for expenditure accounts. 
So if I had like an exact one account that I wanted to run it for, I could um, enter that in here. And you see, I have um, quite a few that maybe I've done that with in the past. Um, if I wanted to include a specific fund, function, object, special cost center, uh, you'll notice that the template reports do also have the option to use a wild card. So um, I could do like fund 001, but then I want object uh, objects in the 600s. Uh, I could do this. So this is like objects starting with six and then a wild card. So this um, gives me a little bit more there. Um, here's my active only. Yes. And then as of period. So and, and again, these options are on multiple reports across the board, and they work um, in similar ways. Like the as of period we're going to talk about, any report that you see this as of, any template report that you see the as of period on, this is going to apply for. So um, when I'm typing this into the template reports, what I need to do is type in a day in the period that I want it to be calculated of. And um, basically the format here, so if I want it to be as of February, I can type um, this date in and it's a date in February, so it will be as of February. It will include my figures through the end of February. If I were to type in February 1st instead of February 28th, that does not make a difference. It will still be as of February, through the entire month of February. So it's not like, it's not gonna give you a total like to a specific day. I like to use the last day of the month because that makes me like, you know, well, I guess it depends. Sometimes I use the last day, sometimes I use the first day. <laughs> but if you like to use the last day so that you can like, you know, remember like, oh yeah, it is gonna run through the end of the month, you can. Uh, the filter name. So this last time we had a drop down. Um, this is just like my my saved query. My uh, browser is picking up, but there is not actually a drop down on this one. So um, what you can do is type in a filter name. So like athletics. So athletics was one of the filters that we um, had an option um, to use. And so we could type that in if we wanted. I'm going to leave that off because we already filtered down here. And then um, exclude accounts with zero amounts. Let's go ahead and um, say yes. I don't want to see any like lines that don't have any data. Um, so those are our filters. This basically filters down the content of the report. Okay, so then we have our sort options and the sort options, um, this, you know, we saw this on um, also on the, the CAN reports and basically what this page lets you do is it lets you change either A, how the data is sorted or B, how the data is grouped together. So if I look at this, if I hover here, so this says cash account, full account code. So this first one, it is still a control break by the cash account. That's one of the things we actually were able to um, enhance with the CAN report is having that actually say cash, cash account code because I know this can be confusing. But, um, but the, by default, this, uh, this template report is the same um, kind of setup that we saw with the CAN report. But what we can do now, let's see my options. I said I want objects in um, the 600s. So let's do this. So we'll keep this by cash account. But if I scroll over here, so all of these, uh, most of these are properties on my report. Like these are the actual columns. But these reports actually have other um, properties written in that you can use to add additional like sorts or subtotals um, to organize your report. So if I want, um, let's say, okay, so object one digit, I only have like one starting digit, so I'm not going to use that. 
but let's organize maybe by object. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and add this as a control break. So again, a control break says, I want this to be a header and a subtotal. And because it's underneath this, this uh, cash account one, it's going to be, okay, so each first, each cash account would be broken out. Then within each cash account, the objects would be broken out because we have them in this order. Um, and then, and let's just go ahead and um, we'll run the report with this for now. But yeah, do also note like some helpful things on here, like forecast line number. We added that one from a request. So you could run um, like a budget summary or the revenue summary. You might want to have like headers and subtotals by the forecast line number would be helpful. And this is what this looks like. So we have our custom report title. And then, so here's our cash account and then each object. So all of these accounts are gonna be object 640. And then here's a subtotal for that object code next 644, okay? And then here's the subtotals for that next 650. And then we have subtotals and a grand total. So it did used to be like um, a while ago that you had to, um, actually modify the internal report definition in order to be able to add these additional like subtotals and um, and headers. But this option, adding that sort options page, uh, really changed all that. We added that maybe like a couple years ago at this point. Um, but again, note that this is also on those canned reports, works exactly the same way. So I do still have this flexibility uh, with those canned reports, which it kind of all works together, right? Because, um, you know, now that you have this, I think there are less situations where these reports will need to be customized, which is um, really nice because um, we're going to look at editing the report definition. And what I think, what I like to think is it's amazing to have that option, but I also don't know that that's something that every, you know, the most users are going to do especially at the district level. So, so this is the, the way to get that kind of on the fly um, customization. Oh, and before we exit out of this, so it saved this as my most recent, but um, if I go ahead and save, save this as my save and recall, it will also save like with my sort options too. Um, so I could even make this like by, by object. And then, so it's going to save those, um, save and recalls in my list. And then I could just do like, get rid of that first one. Cause I had two with that, um, delete button. So general 600 is by object. And then that also saved, um, saved here as well. Um, okay. All right, so let's see, let's see. I just wanna make sure we hit everything there because next what I wanna show is actually going in and um, looking at the this report definition. So cash summary. So if I click this eye icon, What this does is this opens up this report definition for the template report. Um, we are going to hop over before we wrap up with reports and just kind of like look at the custom report creator. Um, but this is like a really great preview for that. So it even says custom report creator up here because what this is, it's like an existing report, but you're viewing it in the same view as a custom report creator. So if there is something that you're wanting to write as a report, um, one thing that may be helpful is to start with an existing report and then customize from there instead of like trying to start from scratch. So, okay, so 
if we customize this, um, the first thing to look at that, that I like to, to check here uh, is the select object. Um, this is important to know when you're um, like building or customizing reports, because this is um, basically like where your properties here are pulling from. So um, I can see that this is the cash account. So everything that's just like directly on this list that's not in a little drop down is coming directly from the cash page. So from the cash account. Um, so when I see like encumbrance, fund balance, um, fiscal to date figures, these are coming, like if I go look at that account grid and I look at the cash account, that is where, you know, fiscal to date extended, that's where these fields are pulling from. Um, there are options here where like you can drill down into accounts and see, look, accounts, I have an encumbrance here, but this is under the budget section. So that's just like, um, you know, a way to kind of like ground yourself on which fields you're looking at is to make sure that you are aware of what object this is pulling from. This was the original account. Um, there's a way that you can like import report definitions through here. But uh, the next one that I would make a, a bigger note about is this save as. So if I want to have a custom version of this report, um, I could basically type whatever title I want in here and then save the report. And this is going to save my own version of it. Honestly, I can't change like a SSDT report. So even if I didn't change the name and just click save, it would still save my own version. Um, but yeah, I like to give it a little little title there so I know which you know what I'm what I've got. <laughs> um, Okay, so now here, so when we're looking at this report, um, so what we can do, and um, it's it's interesting how everything works together here because when we were looking at the budgeting sheets, you know, I said, hey, this is kind of like the, uh, when you're editing a report. And so um, this page, that page works a bit like this page. So if I want to add another property here, uh, what I can do, and let me try and find something that I don't have, maybe like pre-encumbrance. Um, I can just click and drag this over here. If I want to like drag it to a certain spot, I can do that. Uh, if there's something that I don't want, um, oh, and I should make sure to say, these are the columns. This is the data. This is the, the columns of information that's going to be on my report. Um, this is what's going to be included is what I'm seeing on this properties. So I'm going to have, you know, the description, I'm going to have the initial cash and this is what's going to be the headers, um, you know, on my report. And um, so if I bring something over here that's adding uh, like another column or another data. So uh, let's see. So if I don't want it on here, I can just go ahead and click this X. We can take a couple of these off. Um, again, this full account code, we're on the cash account. So this is the cash account code. Sort priority. So this is, um, this would be like the first sort. Um, so this would be the, um, you know, it's, it's going to sort by cash account first. And then if I wanted to say like within each cash account, sort by um, you know, X, Y, Z, but honestly, this report is just for cash accounts. So this one's pretty straightforward. Um, and then control break means it, this works the same. Uh, this is the control break option that we saw from the sort options is this is like an internal way to configure it in the report in, instead of um, on the fly, like the sort options lets you do. Um, anything that you configure in this view when you open the um, the report to generate it and you know how we were doing like the default of the sort of the save and recall, whatever you build in at this point is what's going to show as the default in the save and recall. This function column, so this is like on these monetary on these like numerical fields. A sum means if it does hit a control break, then um, then I'll have a total. 
or like a grand total, it's going to be a sum. You also could do like an average, a min, or a max, but usually it's sum. Uh, also, we have these extended properties, and some of the same things are on here, like sort priority, sort order, like this is stuff that's already on the grid, and so this would apply like whether you change it here or there, um, but there is some additional stuff, like one of them is suppressed. Suppressed means I don't want to actually see it on my report, um, and honestly, that's the case for like this fund and special cost center, like those are there as options to use for your sort options, but they're not actually showing separately when you look at the report itself. So that's what suppressed would do. Um, I have a page break option in here. So if you wanted it to page break, have a new uh, page for each like cash account say, um, and then some, some additional options in here. Uh, we definitely go further into that on some of our report trainings. Um, but this is our basics. So uh, so let's start with this. Um, okay, we hit everything there. So the configure filters now. All right, now the select property says what columns do I have on my um, on my report? The filters is more like which what data is going to show in those columns. So do I want to narrow it down? Like usually you'd have, you know, all cash accounts, but as we've seen looking at being able to run the reports, we had options to say, oh, but I only want this fund. And so this configure filters option is basically what helps set that up. So these look really interesting, you know, what they have this param, they have all of this, um, all of these, this different like um, formatting, but um, I think what we'll leave it at for now is that these options, what those do is they set up, um, and I'm just gonna go here because this will give us a view. They set up these query parameters. So they that setup within the configure filters is what allows you to um, be able to type in these certain selections on the fly. That's what this configuration is. Now, um, again, this is something that we would talk more about in um, um, in like a more specific reports training. Um, if we go to the wiki, uh, the custom report creator, this is actually where um, I would send you if this is something you want to work on. Uh, Configure filters has its own section. And we do actually have examples of like what this should look like based on the operation that you are using. Um, and the operation is kind of like, you know, equals is an exact value. One of is enter multiple values. And so depending on how you're wanting to be able to narrow these down, then that's the operation you would select. And then the formatting for this would depend on that. Um, the other thing that you can do, like, so here's fund. So if I just said like, I'm making a custom report that I'm always going to run for the general fund. And like, I don't even care if that's an option. I could just type this in here and it would be like, I, I like to think of it like hard coded into the report. Uh, so let me hop over to generate so we can see. So look at the option to enter just the fund isn't even here because I took out that little special configuration. I wouldn't even have a choice. Every time, now that I hard coded this into the report, every time it's always going to be just the 001. So, um, so that's also something you can do with your reports if you don't want to get into all of this like customization. Uh, you can just write certain filters um, in, and like if if this is the case too, and I don't want you know my I'm not making this for other people to use. Maybe I'm just using it for myself to use. Like I could just you know, delete out if I wanted to delete some of these other filters because I don't need them. And that was just this X over here. Um, and then generate report. So this is interesting. This is like, okay, what this page is, um, some of these things can be saved in the report definition and some of them are just like a preliminary view, right? So report options, this page, if I do want to have a custom name 
or like a format that this would always run in, I can save that here because this is the only place these report options like come up in this um, in this report creator. The second two tabs, like query options, we saw this was configured in filters. Sort options, this is configured in properties. So if I can like test these things here for these second two tabs, but anything that I actually change in here, this is not going to save in the report. This part is for being able to just like generate and test. But um, this first tab, you can't actually like save things in. So just make note of that. I know like now that we've added the sort options for like the on the fly, especially having it in here, it can um, it can confuse uh, some people sometimes where it's like you think, well, I'm in the report creator. So if I, you know, change this then and then save. Uh, but no, no, you have to do select properties, configure filters, and then the report options is just just these uh, would save like in your report definition. Okay, okay, so we are looking pretty good. Um, I also wanted to show the custom report creator. So, and this is it, this is it. So if I click over here, this is the same uh, type of view that we had with uh, editing the report definition. But um, what I what I'm doing here is starting absolutely from scratch. So if I come in here and first I would select an object. So what page do I want to pull things from? So let's say we want, you know, maybe I should just, I'm just going to stick with the activity ledger because we're not going to go very far here because this, this can be a lot. Um, but it does give you kind of like an option, you know, to have a clean slate. So like if you can't find a report that really is like a starting place for what you want, this gives you that flexibility if you need it. Uh, so activity ledger, and then I could just start dragging over, you know, anything that I want from here. Um, any fields that I want to show in my report, again, I'd add to select properties. Configure filters. This is where I could um, add my filter greater than, you know, enter my um, date. I would give it a report name to save it. And then um, again, like the generate report. Um, I could I could save my options in here and save it. So that's like a really quick overview of it. But I think with seeing edit it, like how to edit an existing report definition, you get a lot of these pieces. So um, so I just wanted to show this part real quick. Um, and then you know what I do have one more tip that I want to share. Um, so if there's something specific you're looking for on a report or like you're trying to customize a report and it's something that's not that's not here it's one of these template reports that um you know it, it doesn't fall into something here um one trick that i've learned along the way is we looked at a lot of these grids um as we went through you know these different menus and, um, you know, we, we pointed out these options that are up here, but see, we have, you know, we use the more option to add different columns to the grid, but these all have this report option here. And so if I came in here, let me say, let me filter this grid. So these are my requisitions that I have um, since uh, March 1st. And then um, I have the vendor, I have any information that I want on this grid. I could even like add more columns if I want. Um, but first of all, I can get a report right from here. And I could just run this, say I run this to PDF. Boom, here's my report. Um, but what can be very helpful is I have this little option down here that lets me save the report. And if I use this option, okay, cool. I've saved the report. I can go back to this report manager grid. 
And um, on this report manager grid now, look at this requisition report. And if I click, I clicked the eye icon, you know, to view the report setup. What's really cool to see is that the select properties, this was everything I had on my grid. So it took all of my grid, um, it took all of my grid columns and made those properties to show on the report. And if I wanted to further customize this now, I can. I have a starting point based on what I was seeing on that grid. Um, configure filters, look at this. This is the date filter that I added at the top of the column. And that made, and then that turned into the configure filters like within this report um, definition. So this can be like a really helpful starting point if um, you are trying to build something. Like I said, I know the custom report creator from scratch can be very overwhelming. So um, this is kind of like a good trick that I wanted to mention. Um, and you know what, I'm actually I'm about done with my section, but I just realized one other thing and I don't know that we have it elsewhere on here. So um, I'm just gonna show the report bundles um, real quick. And um, report bundles, you can create custom report bundles um, to run or you have these standard bundles that run reports and send to um, the file archive and um let me see and um so those are are scheduled to run at regular intervals um i'm gonna show you this is here i just just because i'm not i'm not sure i know pat um has some um i don't talk about the file archive so she'll probably mention these as well um but we do have a training, a reports training scheduled for, uh, I believe it's in July this year. And we are going to talk a whole lot more about reports and report bundles. So um, just wanted to mention those since we're doing the report section as far as um, kind of just, just the, basic, the basic overview of those. But um, we will have opportunities to talk more later. And with that, um, I am all set. Pat, I don't know if we want to go ahead and do a break now, or what do you think? Um, want to take like five minutes? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to pause the recording. Okay. I'm again recording, and today I'm going to be going over the utilities menu starting with account filters. These can be used like with reports. Um, Amanda showed you like where in the report that you can choose or type it in. Um, so this was um, the account filters were like the USA security screen in classic, like on the second screen. So what was in classic does get imported, um, but these control like what the users can create or see or update or even delete. Um, so if they have a filter, they won't be able to process transactions outside that filter. So let's create one. Um, I guess the scenario is for like a high school building secretary that you want to only give access to like budget accounts without them seeing salary or benefits. And that's pretty typical. So we'll create, hit the create button, give it a name, high school, oops. And then this plus sign, as the tooltip says, says add filter. Um, and it defaults to the TI, which if you recall is the transaction indicator from the um, AOS manual. Zero, zero is the cash level, zero, two is the budget. And I'm thinking I wanna give the secretary access to budget accounts, so I would use an O2. Um, just for this demonstration, I'm giving it to, for the general fund. 
the objects that I want to not give access to would be the wages and benefits, which would be the 100 accounts. So I could use those wild cards, um, percentage, percentage for 100s. And over here are buttons that if you click, I'm trying to get the tool tip to pop up. Here we go. The C is for create. If I wanted to give this building act, um, building secretary the ability to create accounts with 100s, I would click it. I don't. The R is for read. I don't even want the secretary to even see these accounts, so I'm going to leave it blank. I don't want her to update it or her or he, sorry. I don't want them to delete, to be able to delete the account, pre-encumbrance with a requisition or um, encumber it with a purchase order. So I'm gonna leave those blank and go to my benefit account, the TAI of 002, oops. The benefits accounts start with two. And I'm, again, I'm not gonna give any access. But what I do want to give access to would be like the 400 purchase services accounts. Um, and the way these account filters work is the more specific things are defined first and then, then it gets more broader like on line four, five, six and so on. So, um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, I was gonna set up a restriction of an OPO for just the secretary's building. So the OPO for her, their building is 101. And I'm gonna give the, process, the permission of read and pre-encumbrance so that they can enter a requisition. Another thing I can do here is add an item with here. And just to show you the other icon, if I wanted to move this line up, you see it jump up. But again, we want to go for more specific and no access listed first. So I'm going to add another line and give them access to all 400. Oops. Now, another thing you can do, sometimes these filters go long or very, very many lines. Um, you can kind of, if these are all gonna be the same, you can kind of skip that and select all. And this button, uh, comes alive, barkens, it's accessible, and you can actually set your permissions for all of them and click OK. But again, remember the, you got to remember the ones that you don't want to give access to. So that's how account filters work. And then you would save it. And then that high school secretary filter name You would, oh, before I leave the screen, I can also clone this for the junior high secretary, for instance, and just update like the OPU and then click save. So that's handy too when you're setting up um, many filters at once. And you can always go back and edit. But I was going to run like what uh, Amanda was showing. Down here on the filter, it should now populate. And again, you can kind of start typing it in and it pops up. So I would choose that, run my bud sum or budget summary report, and I would only get those um, run it. I should only get those accounts.
and summary was chosen from the last default, but um, it would show only that those accounts that that secretary would have access to. Any questions on that? All right, the next option is account change. And this is the, like the replacement for classics account um, change. It allows you to change the expenditure and revenue account codes um, while still leaving the old original accounts on the system. They just, redesign just puts them in an inactive status, which that's one difference from classic. Classic, the old account kind of disappeared in the background or whatever. Here, it, it maintains it in the system, but under the, the core account menu, it, the status becomes inactive. So this is where you can merge accounts. So you can see on this one, this account, 2411 supply account was moved to 2421 um, to the building level of an OPU of 101, and it shows the status of completed. Another neat feature, if we had, this is a demo, so I don't have like previous years, but your districts will, you can go back and go to fiscal year 21 and see what account changes took place there as well. If you, um, if you, let's create one. So again, if I'm, I'm in the fiscal year, and I want to change, you see, I just started typing 001 and it started to pop up. But if, if you're looking for an account, I think it'll pop up at 516, it will pop up. I had in my notes that you could search like 02 slash and then start, but that's an old tip because now as you start typing, it pops up as you want it. All right, so I am gonna change it from this account. And the only difference is that um, the O2 and O1. I click save. And it's on the status of new on the grid. So it's not complete yet, but this way you can um, enter more than one, choose them, and then you can apply them. And you gotta apply them in order for them to take effect. So, and you, once applied, it should either be, um, I think it says rejected or completed. So it's checked marked, I'm gonna apply. It gives you the warning status that the account change job has started. And even if I click this, I can't start another one. If I had another one, it's gonna give you a warning that there's already a count change in process, please wait or something to that effect. So this is, um, this process of account change is restricted to um, moving transactions in the same fund. It's not like fund change. Um, there's a feedback issue for that. This is within the same fund. So like I did um, a different function and a different OPU. So this isn't going to refresh unless I move to a different menu and come back or I click refresh. And I guess I talked too long because long I was going to show you that you could also look in the, um, not in here under the monitor tab that we talked about yesterday, under the app log, it would tell you um, 
I think. If it errored out, you would come here. But our account change was successful. It says it's completed. And now if you look at the old account, it's just um, marked inactive. If you if the new if you have a new account that you want to merge the old account to and it doesn't currently exist on the system, you can create the new expenditure account or new revenue revenue account right here. And this looks similar to your screen when you're under core adding an account. And again, you have um, report options here. If you wanted to uh, process a report from the grid, we also have a template report that is the account change report. So if you did multiple ones or you didn't want the report from the grid, you could also come here and run that. All right. So the next one on the list is um, account mapping. And I have just a second. Account mapping controls how account codes will be mapped um, when using the proration utility, which is one of the items on this list. And you would use this to um, prorate like the workers comp bill. So when I talk about this, we are going to use this. And I think I'm gonna wait and show you this in a moment with the proration utility so that they're like side by side topics and you can um, put it together in one concept. So I'm gonna to go to the automatic reconciliation. And this is like the one-time setup for um, your file from the bank to download and reconcile, reconcile your checks. You'll get these specs for the bank and you have these items that you can format your file with according to the bank. and so forth. Then you would save it by just typing in the name. But you can also load it because I have one that is saved, Huntington. And this is the setup for Huntington for this sample district. So that's a one-time setup. Once that's set up, it should automatically work. Um, change password is, if the user knows their old password, they can change it here um, using this option. They have to know their old password in order to create the new password. And then once click on this, it should update it. Um, there is a feedback issue. It's USASRFB 106. And it's, it, the feedback issue is created requesting to link the Active Directory users so that they would be able to use this button. Currently, they are not allowed, they can't use this change password link or at the login change password if they use um, Active Directory. File archive. So Amanda touched on the report bundles and you have um, month up like a 
monthly reports. And in the monthly reports, you can see, and you can also see this in the documentation, all these reports that are in the monthly report bundle. Um, when you get more in depth into report creation and stuff, scheduling them, this button means it's a scheduled report bundle. These monthly fiscal and calendar year end reports are already scheduled by the software so that when the user closes a posting period, so they close the month of February, it's going to kick off automatically the report bundle. And where that goes is what I'm going to be talking about under the utilities file archive. So we have the monthly report bundle archive, we have the fiscal year report ar archive and the calendar year archive. So when you, you have these typical icons, but the view is only gonna give you a view of the description, which you, you could update. Edit would be the description I guess I should, this was the file set. And then the other one was edit the description. You can't delete a bundle or you can delete it in order to create another one when you're reposting a posting period. But by clicking on this row, all your reports pop up. Now, again, remember I said you can, you can create this every time the user closes a posting period. So you can have multiple times this closed. And if you do, you can use the scroll bar and sort this by the current report date. If you know what I mean, I don't have an, uh, uh, like two appropriation summaries. Say I close the month right on February 28th, and then I had interest received on March 5th that I wanted to post in February. So I reopened February, posted it. And upon closing the month of February, I get another set of all these reports. Therefore, that was where I said you could sort to the most current reports as a tip if you needed to. And just to keep something back in the back of your head, you can add to these bundles. Um, like custom reports, but that is in the reports training. Um, also, when they close like June 2022, you're going to also create a fiscal bundle. And again, these are also in the wiki with the reports listed. Um, so we're on the fiscal year. There's the reports that are, that should be included in the bundle. And I did create one by closing fiscal year 22. So these are populated and all the user would have to do is download your budget. And then you have your, your report stored in this area. And you can see it's for the fiscal, fiscal period because it's under the fiscal year archive and you, it gives you the current date that it was ran. Same with the calendar year. You can see multiple years here. And again, if you click on the row, you have your 1099 files, the calendar year end um, reports and so forth. Now, shortly, um, we're going to see a release release notes for an upcoming release that includes a auditor's report archive, and it's going to be right next to here. And we'll get more information on that, but just so you know, that's coming up. That's going to be another area where I'll show you some of these are going to 
you're going to have a report bundle for auditors, but currently we do have one. But now these reports that are in this bundle, well, with the new release, will go on that new tab. So watch for that. And then in order to get the years or the months from classic onto these screens, that is the next option, file import. This gives you the ability to um, transfer all those monthly CD files out of reflections into a zip folder and to import it on the screen. So then those reports would then be sitting in your file archive. Another option is mass load. This is like USA loads um, account load option, but limited to um, currently only limited to the cash expenditure and revenue accounts. But this gives you the ability to load from like an outside source. Um, the specifications are in the the documentation for each of the, for the cash account format, expenditure and revenue. And besides choosing your entity, you would choose your file and um, process it. This is sometimes useful to inactivate budget accounts by using the account code definition and mass inactivating accounts. So if you have any questions about that and you want, and you're trying to help the district, just give us a, um, let us know. A job scheduler. So these are like, if you had, um, this contains like a list of jobs. So the status on your report bundle generation or the status of your report. And you can see here, it has the account change that we did and it's a completed um, status, but this is where you would come to um, see the status of your jobs. You can click on the icon to view. This will give you the job identity details and um, such as the user, the name and the description. If you need more additional details regarding that job, you would just click on that line and it opens up this pop-up um, highlighted view. It tells you like when it was last ran, which was today what the job was, that it was completed. All right. So we're at the proration utility and the proration utility is a tool that will prorate um, your workers' comp bill that you got, and you want to prorate it to actual, um, you want to prorate the workers' comp bill to what your actual expenditures were for the wage accounts. So, I, you have your options here, month to date, calendar, fiscal. I'm going to choose for my demo purposes fiscal because I don't think we've had payroll in this demo instance in the last three months. This is where you can um, choose your account filter. Now, the reason why you would use an account filter is you're trying to pull just your wage accounts, so just your 100 payroll accounts. 
So we're gonna have to go back and set that up in a minute. You do have the option to run it by appropriation and name your file. So we're, let's go to the count filter. I do have one set up and it's called workers comp. So let's view it. You have the ability to clone filters, but you can see I want all budget accounts for the object of one hundreds because those are the wage accounts and you want the access to be um, read only. So your workers comp account filter is pretty simple. So going back to the proration utility, I am gonna pick that workers comp filter. I'm not gonna choose the name, I'm just gonna let it create. And it, when I click create, what it's gonna do is provide like an Excel spreadsheet, a spreadsheet that can be used to prorate these. All right, so you can see the spreadsheet. You have your fiscal year to date, your percentage, and that's automatically calculated for you based on the total of payroll. So <clears throat> if you added up all your wages and got a, uh, a percent of payroll that this line was, it would be this. So, what you're trying to do is take the actual wages, prorate it by the percent of the bill that it would be and populate your prorated amount. And to do this, all you have to do is enter in B1, the amount of your workers comp bill. So for demo purposes, I'm gonna say it's 9,500. As soon as I click off of that, it's gonna populate based on the percent. So if you added all these up, there's a lot of accounts there that are not or does not have actual wages. So it's only gonna prorate an amount against an actual wage in column C. But if you added up all the amounts in column E, it would be 9,500. So you could download this file. But now we have a new feature, create a PO CSV file. I am gonna download this to come back to it. Because in order to use this, when I click on that, we have that account mapping that now I need to go explain. So we'll come back to this by this downloaded file. So account mapping, that spreadsheet that we created from the proration utility. Oops, I just spilled coffee. All right, I guess I do that in person too. Looking at the spreadsheet that the proration utility created, it shows the accounts of all 100 wages. And what we're trying to do is map, create like a mapping tool so that we can create a purchase order from the spreadsheet and map these 100 accounts to the benefit account because that's where your workers comp benefit invoice would be posted to. So, Again, we're going to take and create a mapping tool from 100s to 200s. And under utilities, account mapping, account code mapping. I have one created because this, this will take some time for the district to create. Because if you think about it, think of all those wage accounts and how many wage accounts that you want to go to the benefit accounts. So I did this ahead of time. 
but you would name your mapping, account code mapping. And right now, the only type available is for the expenditure account. So you don't even have to worry about that. This is to add or create. It creates a line, which I believe is at the end. We have scrolling ability. So there's my line that just added, but I'm not gonna, um, you can delete. So I don't really need that line. But let me show you. <clears throat> let me see if I can pull this up too. So this first wage account on that proration utility is um, the 100s, 112. So here, I just, I use the apostrophe as like a wild card. So this is saying all funds for 1100 functions. So that would cover that in the 100 wage accounts. So anything with 100, whether it's 112, 141, one whatever, because of those or asterisks, it'll cover all 100s and so forth. It's now gonna take that and change it to the 200 benefit account, which are either 262 or 261 for workers comp usually. So this is called the account code mapping and it's, it was similar, I believe in classic, I forget what it was called in there, but um, it maps it from wages to benefits. So this is the cool part. Um, proration utility. We'll just create another one. It was that easy. And we, we can run it by you appropriation too, if you wanted to. Hit create. Enter your $9,500 bill. It populates. There's this button, create POCSV. This pops up. And now I want to pick that. This is the one that we just looked at, the um, account code mapping. So by clicking that, this purchase order is going to be created not with these accounts, but the 200 accounts. I can let the purchase order default. I can either have a no vendor or choose a vendor with the drop down, as well as enter a date or choose one with the calendar <clears throat> and then download. Now this is your, um, it creates a, Purchase order CSV file. That went to the different screen. And now you can see that your accounts all have the benefit account of 200s. So all we need to do is go to the PO grid. under transaction PO, import this PO CSV file, the file that the system created for us with that mapping tool, it's all set to import right into a purchase order. So I'm gonna choose that file that we just created. Load and it will tell you if it was successful or not, and it's going to be successful. Oh, well, if I choose to file, it would. Well, thank goodness it's Friday. Okay. Records loaded, one error zero. So when I close this, I can see that it shows up on my screen. Hello. And it could be ready for invoicing if you wanted to, but let me. Pull up the workers' comp 
Kyo. You can see it has all the 600s. Now this is the only bummer. Let me make this darker. We know of this bug. Sometimes the rounding effect is off by, in this case, two pennies. It's sometimes it's right up here and then sometimes it's wrong down here or vice versa. This is off by a penny. The header is off by two pennies. Um, that will be fixed. But if you have, I mean, look at the, the amount of lines on this purchase order, that's still a time saver. And two pennies is nothing when you're saving this time. So I like this feature because now the treasurer's office can go right to the invoicing of the workers' comp, get it off their desk, and boom, they're done. Is there any questions on that? I hope I didn't go too fast. This is where you would invoice. And again, you can see it came up properly with the right accounts. Okay. Purchase order refresh. This isn't used very often, but sometimes the support team will tell you to go under here and enter a purchase order and hit refresh. Um, users don't have access to this, only um, like ITCs and us and or admin access only would have this. But it would be something specific to a, a purchase order uh, instance that something happened to that PO after being modified or amended and that sometimes fixes it. And then the other last thing on this menu is show profile. And this is just where it gives you the detailed info about the um, user's account. It would um, give you the assigned roles if I had more than one, the organization, the username. That is all on that menu. You can see that we have um, an AR menu tab. Sometimes you won't see that. In this case, being a demo, it's a module that is um, under the system module that is turned on. Just know that that's available. Um, sometimes that module is used for um, ESCs, they often bill their services to school districts. And this is like a module that works in conjunction with the receipts, but it's like a separate billing, uh, a separate place that you can keep track of the billings and your um, credits and stuff like that. It was, use, it's, it will be used like for those districts that used ARF in Classic. And then this tab, USPS integration. And I'm actually going to pull the PowerPoint over here because I'm not in this very often, but I do want to go over it and So the USPS integration is, um, in order to see this, the, U, the integration module under modules need to be activated. And it just controls how the software is connected with the, um, like the payroll side, the USPS R. So you do have similar op options available under there. So the security configuration, this is where um, the admin can configure the security key to allow the USSR to communicate with the other program, USPSR. So while we're doing this in USAS, 
USPS is configuring USAS integration so that the two programs can talk to each other. And then after doing so, you have that test connect connection that you can test and it allows the administrator to test the connection between the two systems. Um, and again, in order to use this, you have to have the module configuration option um, configured for the USPS module. And you will also need to enter the security key into the, um, the USPS security configuration. But once you test it, you can see it says connection successful. So that's telling me that this demo instance would talk to the payroll instance successfully. Um, is there anything that you guys have questions on? All right, so I'm going to turn this over to Amanda. She has a few things that she wants to go over. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Pat. OK. All right. So we're almost done. Um, I just, we have a couple miscellaneous things that we want to make sure we cover. And um, I definitely don't want to be uh, too repetitive in this because, you know, we have um, shown off our new page quite a bit. Um, but, you know, especially kind of being at the very end here, I just want to wrap everything up and kind of review all of the places that you can find information. And, you know, especially when you're beginning, um, you know, we really try and put as much as we can into this wiki and elsewhere um, so that you have resources that you need. So, um, first of all, <clears throat> I'm just going to quickly hop back to this meetings and trainings page. Um, and first and foremost, I, I know um, you likely signed up here or found the recording here, but this is our ITC training and registration page. And I want to highlight just a few things that we've been working on here just to make this um, kind of better over time. Um, you know, first of all, you can register for the trainings. The recording links for the full trainings are here. Um, Pat and I have both mentioned, you know, different trainings that have happened um, or that are coming up. And uh, this is really your go to page as an ITC. Um, to find out, you know, what resources as far as trainings go that we have, you know, either past or coming up. So like I mentioned the report training in July and so reports and report bundles. We're going to talk more about this. Um, this is a Fridays with fiscal as these FWF ones and we try and do Fridays with fiscal um, at least once a month. Uh, so those are out here. And you just click here to um, to register if you want to attend that session. If you are unable to make that session, the recordings are always put out here um, and you would click right here after it happens. Uh, we also have added a column for supporting materials. So if there is going to be a PowerPoint or in, in this case, like today, we have a full page for it. We're going to link those uh, materials here as well. Um, we worked hard as a team this year to make sure we put all of these out here ahead of time. We also broke out the uh, release. We used to do quarterly release meetings um, to go over like, here's what's been updated in the software to help you guys keep up with that because um, there's always something happening. <laughs> um, but now what we're actually doing is having monthly uh, release meetings. You can see review of May releases, review of April releases. So we are doing these every single month. Um, the, the goal is, you know, sometimes they'll probably be, you know, short and quick and just here's what happened. Um, 
So if you're able to make those, those will be here. Again, we'll record them all. Um, but the other thing that's really exciting about this is that uh, here was our, here was one of these. Um, here's our last one. Uh, if you click on the supporting materials, we actually have also created individual pages for these. So if I go back to February, this page is for you as ITC support. So we have um, the releases and these are like the programmers notes, um, the development teams notes on them. So uh, they do usually give like a description of what's been updated. But we've also kind of gone through that and put them um, hopefully in, in some terms that like can help you as support staff, you know, try and make sure that this is clear, um, you know, and kind of like translate a little bit on, you know, what has changed. Um, also, it's USAS, USPS and inventory all in one place instead of having to hop through releases for each different software. Now you have everything on one page. And um, so you can keep up with those. So if you can't make monthly release meetings, like that's fine too. Uh, we have this as like another option to keep up with that. Um, and let me go back a couple pages. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out. So of course, things do change all the time, but some of these trainings like can be helpful long-term. So um, to view a recorded webinar from the previous year, there is a link at the very top of this page, like to go back years. So if there's something that happened in a previous year, I'm like, let me find one. I think, uh, I had one in mind, but it, maybe it was maybe it was one more year back. But either way, if there's something um, back here, like like see, there's PO repair and purchase order updates. So you know maybe that's something. Um, that you want to look at, like if there is a reason to refer back to a previous one. Oh, we did one here. This one's this one's interesting. So this is 2020, which you know, absolutely some things get outdated, but um, this one, sorry for my scrolling, form files, customizing a template form file. This has not changed. So this is customizing like PO forms or customizing like billing um, templates. And so we did a training on this. It was December 2020, but this is still valid. So you could go watch this recording if that's something that you're trying to work on. So we keep all of those out there. They don't disappear. Um, so I just thought that was important to note. And let's see. Okay, so we're on the current year. Okay, one more time. We're going to go to this new um overview beginner training materials page because i just want this to be like a good resource um, for you all as you're going back i know this training is a lot we do three full days we cover all the menus um and so if there's something that you need to just hop back to we wanted to make that really easy for you to do um so we have you know the agenda the powerpoint and then down here, this topic or link to recording, we're going to be putting those links. So we'll do this as quick as we can. I mean, obviously we're finishing this training today. We are able to get the full recordings out there right away, but you know, we're gonna take the time to actually go get the timestamps. So, you know, hopefully in the next like week or so, um, we'll be able to, to start to get these links out here, but keep an eye out. And, you know, that's something we hope you can use this throughout the year um, to refer back to those sections if you need to. Um, the other thing is that, so if I click on this, this is gonna take me to the actual video. This is gonna take us to uh, the full YouTube video. We put our videos out here um, and that's where all of these links go to. But we do have these all organized onto our SSDT YouTube channel. So if you are wanting to look at these trainings in your spare time, like maybe you don't wanna go back and look through those grids, um, through like those training grids, maybe it's easier to look at them like this. But if I come to this channel, look, I can see here's day one, here's day two of our USAS training. We have all of the USPS trainings out here. And we do even have playlists and these playlists organize into categories. So if I wanted to go to USSR, let me pause this, um, over on this side here, we have all of the trainings that are relevant 
to use SR. And if you play these, they'll just like continue to play, but you could, you know, also scroll through and see, you know, which one of these you might want to watch. Like, okay, here's our custom forms. Um, we did do a budgeting training in February. So we have some of the old ones. We, we made sure we put the dates in there so that if you are looking at it in this view, you can, you know, make sure you're looking at the, the up-to-date one. Um, but that's just another option for uh, being able to view these. Okay, and oops, and I closed where it was. Okay, so the other thing is, I mean, I'm sure that you have all gathered by now that I love to hop into the wiki and show these pages in my trainings. And, um, you know, this, I think, especially as a beginner, is such a great resource to have. Um, each one of those different menu options that we've gone through is organized into, you know, its own section here and its own pages. Um, but I do just want to come back and point out this appendix again. Uh, Pat mentioned on the first day we have a collection of error messages. We've been working to, you know, add more as we get them. Um, the FAQ is a really helpful page. We went through, we actually went through support tickets from ITCs and found the things that were frequently asked questions and organized those into this page into categories so that if there were things that, you know, came up like, um, like, you know, here we have a receipt, a refund, how do I reverse a refund? Um, reports, how do I find what report to use? And so all of these things are here available to you and to your districts. Uh, the This wiki is linked directly through the software. So um, this is a helpful tool for both you and your districts to, um, to look things up when needed. And uh, the other thing I want to point out is this general procedures section. So we have a lot of more, more complex like report procedures, useful procedures. There's a lot of great stuff in here. Uh, this general procedures, though, going through everything we did in this beginner training, um, we wanted to, you know, give you the basics of like kind of how you are um, able to, you know, how these things would work, how they would process. And this general procedures list is like a pretty basic straightforward. So if you um, are like, you know, following along, want to go back and practice some of these things. If I go to the cash reconciliation, like this gives you just the basics, you know, here's how you create, here's how you would add these. Um, and it's just very, you know, it's very um, straightforward to kind of help you basically like run exercises if you wanted um, with some of these things. Like uh, here's your payables processing. And so here's the invoice step. Here's where you go next. And so, you know, whether you want to practice this yourself or you're helping your districts practice this, I think that this is um, an excellent tool. All right. All right. And um, one more thing in the wiki. Oop, I want to go all the way back to this homepage. So I want to also highlight our newsletters. So our newsletters, um, it comes in an email from Michelle and she sends those out every single month. And um, we have a collection of all of our previous newsletters out here as well. Um, but let's scroll down. So let's go. So March of 2022 just came out. Now, each month we'll have a couple, like a, a specific focus or like a couple specific focuses in these articles. Um, this month it was job calendars. So this is a little bit more on the USPS side. It is fully on the USPS side. <laughs> but uh, what we do is we have, do you know, we have little tips over here on the side. We have links, you know, the wiki, the documentation. Um, here's the YouTube playlist that we saw. So everything is right here. Um, we have we keep up a status and um, just additional tips like, look, here's a budgeting tip about uh, regenerating that budgeting worksheet that we talked about yesterday. So like as you go, you know, there's going to be a lot that um, you know, comes up at different points in the software. And what we try and do is keep this relevant to the time of year. Um, and I'll give you a little, uh, <laughs> 
little preview, but in one of the upcoming months, I know we're actually going to have an article on mass inactivating accounts. So Pat mentioned using mass load for that. So um, like that's another example of something that uh, you might see in here. But um, these are great. These are great. And, you know, we make sure we put those out regularly. So keep an eye out for that email. It goes to, um, I believe it goes to SSDT notices uh, email. But if you're not getting those and you want to, you can A, see them right here on the wiki, or B, you can um, click here to be put on the distribution list. And then you'll get that email when they come out each month. All right. And the very last thing I want to say is um, we will be sending out um, the CEUs and uh, the evaluation form um, for this beginner training. What I want to mention on there is we have a section that says if you have um, like if you have feedback, if you have topics for trainings that you want to see or like specific topics you want more information on, please, please let us know there. We keep track of those. We use those directly to build what trainings we have coming up. Um, we, we use those to um, decide what newsletter articles. We, we want to do things that you guys want to see. So if you have ideas, please, please share them with us on those feedback forms. And um, yeah, that's it. That is um, all I have. So um, Thank you so, so much for attending and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.